Colleagues, good afternoon and thanks again for your time. Um, as promised, I've got um, Emirates Lions forwards and lineouts coach Baron uh, Pedersa and uh, loose forward Emmanuel Chutuka. We've got about 10 to 12 minutes for the session, guys, so if uh, we can raise hands so we can start the session. I don't see any hands. Who's going to kick us off? Okay, I will go. Uh, Sardal, and then we'll go with Carl. Warren, are you happy with the way things go in the lineouts? Um, I sort of, yeah, um, I'm, I think I'm very happy at the moment. Um, there was, um, maybe on tour, there were one or two things that didn't go according to plan, but I mean, um, looking, looking at where we're lying stats wise, um, after six, uh, after six or seven games, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. So guys are working hard, um. They're doing, they're doing what, what I'm asking of them. So, yeah, I can't, um, I can't complain where we are at the moment. Thanks, Saro. Carl, go for it. Barton, uh, you guys just released uh, a, name, a list of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19 guys that has re-signed with you guys. Do you think that's a... a, a um, affirmation of the good work that's doing there and the future of the Lions? Yeah, I think, I mean, yeah, uh, 100% I agree. I think at any, any place where you go, any union, and I mean, there's that amount of guys that resign, and I mean, that's a mixture of experience and of younger, younger players. Um, so I think obviously um, there's always stuff uh, and things that you want to improve, improve on at a union. But um, um, I think where we are at the moment, the, it shows the, the confidence the, the players has in the union and, and hopefully in the coaching staff. Now you let yourself open wide open. What is there that you still would see to improve at the union? We want to win more games. <laughs> All right, you can dance. Thank you, Barnes. Enjoy. Plain and simple. Thanks, Carl. Uh, uh, who's next? I don't see any. Uh, we'll go for Liam and then Walter. A question for Emmanuel, and it, it ties into what was just asked um, about winning. Um, when you arrive at a winning recipe, uh, or let me ask you this, how close do you think the Lions are to developing a culture where, you know, that winning recipe is within your grasp every week? Yeah, I think for us it's more a thing of, you know, um, Taking a week by week, you know, not just getting not getting ahead of ourselves. I think you know we we did well last week against Zebra, but you know it's our main focus this week is just to tackle dragons and to just make sure that we execute our plan and um, and what the coaches want from us. I think once we do that and we get the win, I think you know three, four, five weeks down the line, you realize that you won a couple of games in a row, and then you, from there you can take it from there. But I think to to get ahead of ourselves and you know to think just in about the uh, winning culture is something that I think won't necessarily work for us. I just think for us, what's been working for us, uh, um, and I think that what won't work for us is just taking we, um, each game at, at a time and, you know, just assessing where we are once we, like, you know, three, four, five games down the line. Is part of the secret then just to put whatever the result is of one particular week, put that behind you and you move forward? For sure. Like, you know, you can't, we can't necessarily hold on to... Um, um, the good stuff. I mean, we obviously don't work with the good stuff that we have from the week, but you know, I'm from the previous game. But um, going to this week it was just, you know, um, amnesia. You know, just a reset. Uh, I didn't go again to do the same process that we've been doing throughout um, all the other weeks. You know, and just not to get too emotional about uh, our assessments and and how we review games. And I think we did well this past weekend, but I think you know, um, it means nothing if we can't back it up this weekend. So I think our main focus was just to, to take it on this weekend. Thanks, Liam. Morgan? Thanks. Um, <clears throat> my question is just to coach quickly. Uh, I've got two questions. Uh, but first, coach, any um, injury concerns heading into Dragons? Um, no, we're actually lucky. Um, nothing nothing major. Um, so, uh, obviously, some, some bumps and bruises. One or two guys that, that uh, couldn't do everything yesterday or today. But... Um, um, yeah, nothing, nothing too serious for for anyone. 
And then to uh, both of you, uh, guys just briefly have spoken about this creating this winning culture and Liam has also asked the questions about um, how you uh, how far you are from it. But my question is, there are a lot of positives that you guys can take out of what happened over the weekend. Uh, but where are the work ons that you guys identified? There was obviously a little bit of a in the first 10 minutes of the second half that they you know, allowed them to score a few tries. But where are the other work ons that you guys have identified as you're heading out towards Dragons and then also the EPCR challenge? Um, yeah. I'll go first. Yeah, I'll go first. Um, for me, I think um, we conceded uh, you know, three, three tries against uh, Zebra that we didn't necessarily have to. I think it was too. We gave it to them a, a bit too easy. I think um, you know. It's. I think our tank scored nine tries, so that's always going to look good. But I think, you know, we want to be. You know, we want to be good and world class on both sides of the ball. So, I think if we can clean up and be better defensively, um, we honestly do be, believe and think that the tries that we get, we conceded against it was a bit too easy. So, I think we just want to be a lot more competitive and a lot more resilient when it comes to our defenses. And I think that's something that we be working on and tightening up this week for Dragons. Yeah, and I think if I have to speak from a forward point of view, um, I think something that we set ourselves out at the beginning of the season is to to score, to try and score more mall tries. And um, I think we started off well and we a little bit behind where we want to be on that. So um, each week that that's a good work, uh, that will be a work on for us. Um, but in saying that, I mean the teams that you play against. They, it's it's not you just you're not just going to go there and score a mole try. So you have to work really really hard. But that is um, if that's more of a of a, a set piece point of view where I think we we want to improve on a bit. Thank you. Thanks, Morgan. Uh, can I ask that we go with Walter and then uh, Carl and then Liam? Thanks, uh, Borant. Uh, you uh, the team had a. a fairly uh, decent or uh, a good win against uh, Zebra in, on the weekend. Yes. And uh, the Dragons are also uh, a little bit low on the log. Uh, how how difficult is it to, uh, to motivate the team for Saturday's match and also to make sure that they're not complacent for this match? To, to motivate our team? Yes. Um, yeah, look, it's it's. Um, I, I can be honest. I'll be honest. It, it hasn't been difficult to motivate them uh, after any game. I mean, all our losses were so close at the beginning, and I mean, we the one uh, one of the positives that we took out of all the other games is that we got points out of every single game we played so far. So um, we there, there was never after after a close loss or anything where we really had to motivate the guys. I think it's it's more about keeping the energy intact, <laughs> so they so they sort of keep that energy for um, for for Saturday. So yeah, um, dragons yeah, hundred percent they're not lying great on on the on the log, but um, again they they do have quality players. They they they've got a good system. I showed the guys this morning um, in terms of set piece. They've got a very good lineout system. Um, so we, 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 we it's, it's going to be a tough game. It's not a three o'clock game where we can bargain on on the sun and the heat. So it's a little bit cold, a little bit cooler. Um, and uh, yeah, we um, we just have to rock up and do what 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 we've been training during the week. Thanks. Thanks, coach. Uh, uh, Carl and then Liam. Varun, now you don't have to dance. Um, <laughs> in the newspapers and and. and Cash said on the weekend there's eight to ten uh, players that can become Springboks in the near future or within the next four year cycle. Um, and Jock and Rossi made it clear they're not looking for the best player, they're looking for the best player that will fit into their game plan. Yeah. I presume that's the same with you guys. Yeah, definitely. Look, I mean, if um, obviously I'm, I'm not going to sit here and name names, but I mean, if you if you look at if you look at the, the quality players we have, the guys that's been coming through the school system, through the junior system, um, being here now for three or four years, and um, that, those are, that, I mean, that's the future of of the Lions. And I think, again, going back to those those guys that resigned, I think that 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 shows a lot of um, good work that that goes on that we don't even see sometimes. Um, but um, I, look, yeah, 100%. I agree in, in, in what Rassi says. 
Um, obviously, they can they can choose from the best players out of South Africa, <laughs> but um, what what we have here at the moment, I think, is the is the right place at the right time. So yeah, I could say it like that. But the game plan of the Springboks and the game plan um, of the Lions is quite different. Yeah. So how do you, how do you marry the hopes of the players from the Lions and give them the opportunity? to convince Rossi and them that they will fit into the Springbok game plan? I think a lot comes down to, to um, um, results, I'll be honest. Um, so if we have good results, um, players are going to pl play better. Um, and um, that, is, that is more where, where the eyes will be more on us, obviously, if we get more results, more weekends. Um, yeah, so I, I really think the, more, the better results we get, the more uh, uh, the national coaches will, will look at what is going on here at the moment. Great stuff. Appreciate Thanks, Carl. We'll go with Liam and we'll wrap up with Sim. Uh, another one for Barrent. I mean, you mentioned the mall earlier, and often when people talk about the mall, they, they get very different views. Um, we've seen in Europe especially, uh, people moan about the mall, especially when uh, teams don't defend the mall the way they may be supposed to. Uh, they often make the excuse that the, the dice is loaded against the defending team. Do you think there's anything that should be changed in the mall uh, to make it uh, a, a facet of play uh, where you could say there's a sort of a, a, an equal, there's a balance, you know, in other words, it's, it's fair for both defending team as it is for obviously the attacking team? Yeah, look, I'll, I'll be honest. I think um, maybe it's because you're obviously a forwards coach and I mean, but I mean, I really, I don't mind if they just tell us what they want. We can coach it like that. If they, if they tell us they, they, they want, they don't want anyone to double bank. We'll coach not to double bank. So you understand. So for me personally, um, it's not a big issue. I'll be honest. You have to adapt to, to, to what the opposition gives you. Um, and you obviously, as a, as a coach, you're always going to push the boundaries on the mall attack or on the mall defense. Um, but for me personally, I don't really have an issue on, on, on the malls. I think it's more how every ref sees it. Um, but yeah, that unfortunately there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing we can do about that. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't have complaints on, on, on the malls at the moment, I'll be honest. Thanks. Sam, so you've got the final one for the afternoon. How's it? How are you doing? Good. Um, Emmanuel, just um, on, a, on a personal note, obviously as a younger player starting out at the Lions, you've played in all three of the loose trio positions. Um, as you're getting older and sort of um, one of more senior players, would you, what would you say is sort of more your, you know, your preferred, preferred one of those three? Um, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a difficult question for me because I've, I honestly just have, I've enjoyed every single position that I've played. Um, um, the, the system that we've got to going on here, it's, you know, it's it's uh, it's not really much different. Um, you know, playing um, in uh, six or eight, or you know, maybe seven might be a little bit different. But I think I've enjoyed um, I've enjoyed every position that I've played so far. I, I would say if I had to prefer, uh, I'd probably go with the blind side, uh, seven flanker. But um, yeah, like I said, I really don't mind playing on on either side of the scrum, whether it's six, seven or eight. Um, I, I'm really happy. I'm just playing. Yeah, I'm, I don't really mind that I'm playing anyway. Right. Thanks very much, colleagues. Some quality questions there today. Thank you very much, uh, Coach Barrent, Manu. Um, have a good afternoon. Thank very you. Much. Thank you, Bayo. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks, Nyanisu. Appreciate it. Bye. Thanks.